So what do you do when you have oxygen sensors that uh, they're not working basically, the values are all, all over the show, but yet when it warms up it's okay, well usually it's the heaters that aren't working, when the car's cold it needs heaters and the oxygen sensors, because until they get to 600 degrees, sensors will be, um, they'll be in what they call open loop position, so they're not closed loop, so there's no, the engine uses pre-programmed values to operate and then when they come online they're going to close loop everyone's happy but they need eaters for that so i'm going to show you exactly how to diagnose them in this video a couple of different techniques including amp meter measuring the current draw so sensors of ptc what that means is positive temperature coefficient so as the temperature increases the resistance increases also and then the current decreases so it's kind of like ptc useful because they're like a self-limiting thermostat if you like they act like a, a, a sort of me a mechanical thermostat so they prevent things from melting and overeating and getting too hot so they're very cool but when they go wrong they go wrong but let's just check these out this could be quite interesting probably wondering why we've got oxygen sensor faults behind the car on both banks well i'm going to show you why it's probably just the heater heater function heater function and the signal's not going to be right when it's warming up because the heater don't work let's just check it out look at live screen live data first so you can see that the temperature of both of these when the fault occurred essentially just wasn't enough it should be 600 degrees before it starts working usually and the resistance is 65,280 ohms that's a, probably a default value it can't be just the same and it's probably usually when it's just open circuit well it actually says it's open circuit there so what we're going to do, we're going to get the power probe up and we're going to just measure it. Now there is a fuse, I'll draw a wiring diagram on the board upstairs in a minute because it's brew time now. And I'll explain on the wiring diagram uh, the situation. You can see the values, they're just stuck there. They're not doing anything, they're both the same value basically. Time since start, since the end of starting. Mm, 332 seconds. And it's definitely got a fault, it's done it 105 times. So what I've got on my bench here is I've got an airbag squib reading 2.9. It's a resistor in place of an airbag squib. It's just a simple resistor. And a heater circuit is exactly the same. It's just a resistor that heats up. It's PTC, as I've said. Now, when it goes 0L like that, if we see that on our heater, we've got an open circuit. And that's what it's saying. But at the time of test, as you will see, it wasn't open circuit. So how does it actually work? Well, there's the sensor. That's the sensing element. The heater is around about here, and it heats up the probe. There's the nut. There's the body. And then, obviously, of course, the heater is heating up that uh, probe to get the uh, probe up to 600 degrees as soon as. And that's, as I said, puts the heating element on. I'll write that on the heating probe. Now, obviously, it won't work until it's at 600 degrees. The heater itself is just, as I said, just like a coil, just like this resistor. You've got a positive on one side. You've got a negative on the other side. And all we're doing is the... Uh, engine ECU, the DME in this case, is just heating it and it's pulse width modulating the signal, except when we're going to test it on the car, we're not going to PWM it, we're going to go full chat. I'm just showing there with those lines, there are certain areas where you might find a break, you'll have a mega ohm value or you'll have uh, zero L, which is open circuit as I've already explained. So um, mega ohm is too much resistance, it can't do anything when there's too much resistance, it can't heat it, it can't overcome the resistance. And of course, zero L on your multimeter means we've got no resistance at all. We've got infinite resistance, open circuit. So now you know that, you know how the system works, let's get on to diagnosing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the power probe and I'm going to go under the car. And I'm just going to basically check the circuit, plugged in, and back probe it with ignition. We should have 12 volts there. Now the reason I'm not going to check the fuse first is basically... The fuse is a nightmare to get to. It's behind the glove box and I just can't be bothered scrapping about. For me, it's easy just, just to pull the trim off and leave, plug this in and just to see what the situation is. Both sensors have the same 12 volt supply from the same fuse. So if one goes because of fuse and the other one goes, but usually it's the heater. Open circuit, usually it's just the heater. Resistance values. But for both of them to go, it's a bit unusual, isn't it? So let's check it out. So what we'll do, we'll just take a quick uh, check of the oxygen sensor fuse which we know is going to be okay there you are the heater's got 12 volts now it will have 12 volts sorry on the ground now don't worry about that it's not shorted it just means that the engine is not running it doesn't need to activate the heat so the, the dme on that particular wire there the uh, gray and white one will ground that obviously then it'll then go into the oxygen sensor which is doing it'll activate the heater and we can do the same with that but what we're going to do now is because we suspect the actual heater inside here is knackered well We've got two wires there, you see. Now, we need to separate this to measure the resistance, because if we don't separate it, we're going to measure the resistance inside the DME, the engine control unit. Now, we can just pull that off, and we're going to back pin those wires, and we're going to check the resistance. So just to show you when I was checking those actual uh, values, 
of the center power supply. I didn't really need to check it because all four sensors, two wideband at the front, two normal four wires at the back, they're all on the same power supply. So it stands to reason that oh, maybe we could have had a broken wire here between the front ones and the back ones, but it's highly unlikely, isn't it? So that's how the system works. There's a fuse, sensor one, two, three, and four, all in series. Stupid design, but there you go. So essentially, because we can't ground this heater, we've got 12 volts one side and 12 volts the other, but then when we ground it, we're, we're gonna heat it up and you can see there's a current draw of 0.8 of an amp. And you can see how it's decreasing the longer I hold the ground on it, because that's the exact principle of a PTC, positive temperature coefficient circuit, you see. So as the, as the, um, at the longer you keep it on, the resistance increases and then the current decreases according to Ohm's law. Connecting a, an Ohm meter while I'm powering it will overwhelm the flute meter's um, very small millivolt output when it's measuring resistance. But don't worry, the flute has a protective circuit to, uh, it won't blow up. If you do that with another cheaper meter, it'll probably set, blow the meter up really. So you must be careful, don't do this what I'm doing. Uh, in fact, we we'll, we can turn it off actually or disconnect the probe temporarily. Because all I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at as it's heating up because it's positive temperature coefficient. The heater, as it gets hotter, when I apply current on the negative terminal, like they should be port switch modulated, but there's nothing wrong with that heater. One point odd amps there. Well, as I keep that on, as it gets hotter, the resistance value is going to increase because it's positive temperature coefficient system, which tells me there's nothing wrong with the lambda sensors in that sense. And that's an issue because if we've got an issue with the lambdas, they're not wrong with the heaters, but the DME is saying there is, then maybe we've got a wiring fault somewhere. I mean, if you look at this, it's a right Joey setup. I'd have been bloody zipped out it there like that. It's a right dodgy setup, isn't it? Let's be honest. And they do look like not that old, actually. So I think we're going to be looking at some issue with wiring, I think, to be honest with you. So this could be an interesting job, couldn't it? Most of my videos, that was done quite some time back. And uh, essentially, I never got to change the sensors because the guy didn't want to pay for it. But... Uh, I, d I didn't finish it, but I suspect because they did look quite kind of new then. I think he changed them at some point. So clearly, we didn't have a fault with the sensors now. But to me personally, I think there might have been an issue with the DME, the wiring or something. Maybe one wire was short and it was cutting off or something like that. So you can't always do your videos and finish them how you want to finish them because it depends on customer, doesn't it? But I thought it was useful information for you in case you wanted to yourselves learn how to test a heater by just a simple way of doing the resistance but also to put an amp clamp and actually see the current draw if you've got a good current draw like that you've got an intact heater element haven't you positive and negative side of it is intact if you have too much resistance you won't have anything because you'll have virtually no current draw as the resistance increases but at least you got to see how ptc system works like a self-regulating uh, thermostat if you like good eh i like it i love doing stuff like that anyway Let's get back to work.